Hey guys, just wanted to stop by to read you a little book. My name is Dondre Whitfield. I'm an actor and an author, and this is my beautiful daughter, Parker Whitfield. Hi. Parker, what are we going to read them today? We're reading Jake Makes a World by Sharifa Rhodes Pitts and illustrated by Christopher Myers. Awesome. This book is about a 13 year old boy uh, named Jake who moves from uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania with his mom to New York which is my hometown. So this story is extremely special to me because it's about my hometown and it's about what I've been experiencing my whole life, which is art. So art. So with that being said, let us start Jake Makes a World. In the morning, Jake watches the sun wake up. He makes a big stretch and the sun stretches too. So what we're seeing right here is that Jake is just waking up and he's stretching and so is the sun, right? So as Jake is rising, so is the sun. With first light, the dancing dark shadows begin to fade. Then the colors come again, yellow, orange, and blue on the quilt that covers Jake and his brother in bed. Mother's paper, flowers in pink and red. Is Jake looking outside of his window and the shadows of the night before are actually leaving now because the sun is stretching again, remember? So the sun is coming up and now it's bringing out all of the beautiful colors, bringing out the yellows, the oranges, the blue, which is the sky. And so that's what Jake is experiencing now as he's waking up and looking out of his window. His feet sink deep into the thick blue rug. When his toes touch the ground, it's like a sky upside down. When Jake moved to this new city, this New York, to this neighborhood called Harlem to live with mother again, these familiar things from his old home in Philadelphia greeted him like long lost friends. So many of us have different floors in our homes. Some people have hardwood floors, some people have linoleum floors, some people have concrete floors. Well, on his floor is a lush blue rug. And for him, it looks like having the sky be on his floor. Every time his toes run through the, the, the rug, he's reminded of the sky. And it also reminds him of how he grew up or where he grew up in Philadelphia. Outside Jake's building, men played chess and checkers, balancing the boards on their knees. So now in these uh, neighborhoods, particularly where, like where I grew up in New York, I experienced this too. Many of uh, our elders would come outside and they would play games. They would play card games, they play board games, like chess and checkers. Older boys sell fruit from a wagon or ice from a bucket, shouting for people to come down and get it. Mothers walk fast to work and more work. Signs promise home cooked meals for 15 cents and shoe shine to make you brand new. So now what we're seeing is, is that no matter what, people are doing all that they can in order to make a living. Some people are selling shoe shines. Moms are, are going to work. Um, dads are outside doing all that they can. People are selling fruit from outside. Whatever they can do to make a dollar that will make their existence better, to add to the household. So this is what you would often see anywhere where people are you know, trying to make a better life for themselves. A preacher in a hat shouts and sings about God. A newsboy tells the stories of the day from downtown and around the world, but tells them with a tune. At the corner, a short man stands on a stepladder telling everyone how we will get the freedom we need. So this happens a lot too where I was from in, Bro uh, in, in Brooklyn, in New York. Uh, people would come out and tell you things that would encourage you. People would, preachers would come out and tell you that that God has something better for you. People would come out and get on step ladders and yell their, their messaging that they thought people needed to hear. You know, um, boys would, would sell newspaper and, and then you would also hear uh, music playing. So there's always uh, a rhythm to the city. Most days after school, Jake goes to a place called Utopia's Children's House. 
The word utopia means that it is a special place, unlike any other. For Jake, it is. So what we're describing now or what we're hearing being described now is this great place called utopia that Jake would often go to. And it's this this special place. Now, for me, I never grew up in a in a um, in a neighborhood where they had an actual place like Utopia House. But what I would do is I would create my own Utopia in my mind. Being an artist allows you to be able to create things on your own that you may not have in your life yourself. So that's the great thing about the Utopia space. It doesn't have to be a house. It could be something that's created in your mind. At Utopia House, Jake makes things with his hands. He carves a block of soap into a fish. He sews scraps of leather into a secret pouch. With watercolors, he swirls the shadows that dance on his wall at dawn and the patterns of the rugs in his living room. So again, this is the great thing about being an artist because you can use anything to make great art, right? So leather pouches, sand, uh, sandpaper, every little thing, a soapy piece, uh, 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 a, uh, a, a soapy piece of soap, <laughs> right? So you can use that piece of soap in order to create a, uh, whatever your carving wants to be. In this case, Jake made a fish. So no matter what you have at your disposal, you will be able to be an artist. So you can see here, he's painting what he sees, right? Whatever he in encounters in his environment becomes his painting. Jake takes a stick of charcoal and draws a pair of eyes to see everything the people on the street see. He draws one pair of ears to hear all the shouts and songs, one mouth to carry all their voices. All the faces Jake sees on the street become one face. So now Jake is just, everything that you see in your life becomes your art. It becomes a part of your canvas. So every eye that he saw, every ear that he saw, every face that he saw got represented in his piece of art. Jake shows this new face to his teacher, who smiles and nods and says, you should see this, a very old mask from Africa. So now, Jake's piece of art, which is very Afrocentric, now reminds his teacher of a specific piece of art that they have in the class. Jake stares at the mask for a long while, and then he makes his own mask from brown paper bags and glue and paint. When he is done, the mask smiles at him. So this is the beautiful part about this. Art can be inspired by anything. It can be people that you see, it can be sounds that you hear. And in this case, one piece of art uh, inspired his piece of art with a brown paper bag. Very beautiful, beautiful Afrocentric work being displayed here. Next, Jake takes a shoebox, and in the box, he tries to fit the whole street. Inside are cardboard chessmen, tiny boys folded from construction paper, and mothers walking fast to work wearing dresses cut from magazines. He stacks matchboxes to make buildings and paves the street with sandpaper. So what we're seeing here now is that, again, it's further illustrating the fact that no matter what, you are going to be able to create fantastic art with whatever it is that you have, right? So magazine uh, pieces that you cut out, sand uh, paper, uh, anything, cardboard boxes. We all have shoe boxes at, you know, of, of some kind in our homes. So what we're seeing now is the fact that you can make art out of anything that you have at your disposal. And that's what Jake is doing now. Jake has made a world, a small piece of this place called Harlem. It is now his home. Jake's Harlem has all the shouts and songs and noises of Harlem outside, but here they are not sounds. They are colors, they are shadows, dancing, they are rhythms, they are light. You know, how do you make art out of sounds? How do you make art out of rhythms, right? Well, Jake now is using the sounds that he hears, the rhythms that he hears out of colors, right? So that is about your interpretation. Whatever it is that you experience in life, you will be able to interpret that in any way that you want. 
and express it in any way that you want. So that's the end of our story. But now what we see is, is that this is the artist. His name is Jacob Lawrence. He was born in 1917. He passed away in the year 2000. And this story was actually about his very life when he was uh, 13 years old. So those are the things that he was experiencing. And as you can see here, these are all of his great pieces of work that are illustrated. And again, what I love about art is that it can be anything you want it to be. It's not about one single interpretation. So what I want you all to be inspired to know is that art can be everything Art actually will allow you to create your own utopia. And I hope you enjoyed this book called... Jake Makes a World. Yeah. So, hope you guys enjoyed that. And my daughter and I will be back to read you another one.